Okay, so the uh, third criteria for selecting ETFs is that the ETF is trending up. And the covered call strategy in general is a neutral to slightly bullish strategy. And we realize the full profit potential for a covered call when the stock closes at or above the strike price of the at the money call at expiration. So we saw in the example of the ERX December 30th, um, the, the, the ERX was trading at 39.91 and we sold the 40 strike call. So it only has to go up nine cents in this example. And um, it would be in the money and, and you would realize the full profit potential. So um, ETFs uh, or uh, covered calls in general, you don't need a big price movement in the underlying stock or ETF to realize the full profit potential. So, you know, that's if you're selling the at the money call. So each week uh, you're just looking for the, the stock basically or the ETF just to be flat or maybe up slightly. So um, in general, we uh, it's a neutral to slightly bullish uh, strategy. And we only trade ETFs that are in a price uptrend <clears throat> and then we avoid ETFs that are in a price downtrend when we enter these covered call trades. So we just simply look at the price trend in ETF. We want to make sure it's um, trending up uh, before we initiate the uh, trade. And the reason we do that is if the ETF is in a price downtrend and the price is trending down, um, the ETF price over the course of the week could exceed the cash payout that you received. So let's say you received a 110 uh, premium for that. If the ETF is down 150 for the week, uh, then you, that would exceed the cash payout you received and you have a loss on the trade. So <clears throat> we, uh, we found it's better to just simply focus on ETFs that are in a price uptrend um, to reduce that risk of the price decline of the ETF exceeding the, the weekly cash payout that you received from selling the call option. So um, we're just looking in general for the ETF to remain flat or maybe up slightly. So uh, we just avoid ETFs that are in a price downtrend. Uh, there's no need to do that because there's plenty of ETFs in a price uptrend. So <clears throat> we use a simple trend following system to determine the price trend of an ETF. We look at the one month price of the ETF in relation to its 10 month simple moving average. A very, uh, this is a very uh, common indicator, this 10 month simple moving average. And we're just looking to make sure that the one month price of the ETF is above, above that 10 month simple moving average. <clears throat> so moving averages are a simple method for tracking the current price trend of an ETF and that allows us to trade with a trend instead of trying to predict the future price movement of an ETF. So if the one month price of an ETF is above its 10 month simple moving average, then that ETF is in a price uptrend. And if the one month price of the ETF is below the 10 month uh, simple moving average, then the ETF is in a price uh, downtrend. So this simple system has been very effective in identifying the price trend. Uh, here's an example. Uh, this is for the uh, triple Qs. And <clears throat> we can see this red and black line right here. This is the monthly uh, price movement of the triple Qs. And this blue line right here is the 10 month simple moving average. So we can see back in um, July right here, the monthly price uh, closed above the 10 month simple moving average. So once the uh, one month price is above, above the 10 month simple moving average, then that ETF is on a buy signal. And as long as it, uh, the one month price remains above the 10 month simple moving average, then we can write uh, covered calls on that ETF. So you can see <clears throat> one month price crossed above the 10 month simple moving average, stayed above 
the uh, 10 month simple moving average. So we could initiate um, covered call trades uh, as long as that one month price is above the 10 month simple moving average. Now, if the one month price closes below this 10 month simple moving average, then we don't want to initiate uh, covered call trades. <clears throat> And you can download um, the one-month price and the 10-month simple moving average from uh, stockcharts.com. And uh, if you want to download, uh, first you type in the uh, symbol. In this case, uh, in this example, we typed in SPY for the S&P 500 uh, index spiders. And under period, you would select uh, monthly because we want to look at the monthly price. <clears throat> and uh, again, we typed in SPY under period. We selected monthly, monthly. and then in the overlays uh, section, we want to select uh, moving average simple, and then under parameters, 10. So um, that will give us the 10-month simple moving average for the um, SPY. <clears throat> and if you click update, then that will create the uh, price graph. And we can see that uh, this black line here is the one month uh, price of the SPY. And this blue line is the 10 month uh, simple moving average. So as long as that one month price is above the 10 month simple moving average, then we can uh, initiate covered call uh, trades for that uh, ETF. <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, trading the ETF uh, covered call strategy in bear markets. And as, as I said before, in the 2008 bear market, we did uh, trade these uh, covered calls uh, on inverse ETFs. So one of the advantages of ETFs over stocks in a bear market is that you can trade weekly covered calls on bearish ETFs. And bearish ETFs increase in value as the underlying basket of stocks decline in price. Um, for example, the three times bearish energy ETF is symbol ERY, and that seeks daily investment results before fees, fees and commissions of 300% of the inverse of the performance of the energy uh, sector index. So if the basket of, underlying basket of stocks go down in an inverse ETF, then the, in, in the ETF price will go up. So they're known as inverse ETFs, and we can trade these in uh, bear markets. <clears throat> so in a bear market, you could trade covered calls on the ERY, which is the inverse energy ETF, and other stock ETFs, uh, and they would probably be in a price uptrend according to the one month and 10 month simple moving average system. So uh, the ERY and other inverse ETFs in a bear market would probably be in a price uptrend and therefore we could uh, write covered calls on the inverse uh, ETFs because they'd be in a price uptrend. So you don't have this uh, flexibility um, when you're trading stock covered calls. Uh, you, you can only trade them one way and that's uh, uh, the bullish side of the trade, but with these inverse ETFs, uh, they're bearish positions, and we can trade those in uh, bear markets. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, um, during that uh, severe 2008 bear market, uh, we collected over $598,000 in option premiums uh, with these inverse ETFs. And those trades are listed in our um, book that we wrote on uh, covered call trading. So let's look at a, a, a price chart of an inverse ETF. This is the um, inverse uh, S&P 500 index, and this is this is back in uh, 2008. So um, the black and red line right here, that's the monthly price movement of the inverse ETF, and the blue line is the 10-month simple moving average. So we can see that the inverse ETF was in a price uptrend 
because it's the inverse of the movement of the S&P 500 index. So the S&P 500 index was declining and the inverse uh, ETF was increasing in price and was in a price uptrend. So we wrote covered calls on uh, inverse ETFs. <clears throat> And uh, the nice thing about trading the inverse ETFs is your risk is uh, limited to the cost of the ETF. And that's not the case if you're short a stock or you're short an ETF. Um, you have virtually unlimited risk if the stock or ETF continues to move up in price. So with the inverse ETFs, your risk is limited to the uh, cost of the ETF and you don't have any uh, risk beyond that, so you can't get a margin call. <clears throat> so that completes the presentation.